Well, human trash can of a basketball coach, Doc Rivers, is on fire right now. As in, like, a burning, floating dumpster fire. That is ridiculously bad. Uh, it, it really is. And at this point, I'm not totally sold that this isn't somehow intentional. We need to launch immediate congressional hearings to investigate this. We need to put Doc Rivers on the stand under oath. Was human fecal matter? As the Bucks are so hilariously bad at this point, there just has to be ulterior motives at play. How else can you explain what the hell happened last night? The Milwaukee Bucks went into Memphis for an obvious get right game coming off of a humiliating beating in their previous game, a 123-97 loss to the Miami Heat, who mind you were without Jimmy Butler for that game. And one with my emotions, so. And the Grizzlies look to be the perfect opponent for Milwaukee to get a nice feel-good win going into the week-long All-Star break. Memphis, after all, is sitting currently at just 13th in the West and came into this one 1-9 one and nine in their last 10. And to compound matters for the Grizzlies, they were also without their top four leading scorers in terms of per game average for the season. As Morant, of course, is already out for the year, and Marcus Smart is out indefinitely with a finger injury, but they were also missing Desmond Bain and Jaron Jackson Jr. for this game. And even with those players, the Grizzlies entered last night's game as the worst scoring team in the league. What? Yes, but wait, there's more. They are also the worst shooting team in the NBA at just 44% from the field for the year. The Bucks were 14 and a half point favorites in this game, which seemed, quite frankly, like not enough points. Giannis, meanwhile, scored 35 points in this game and had 12 assists with only one turnover and missed only two shots, going 15 of 17 from the field. Not enough to overcome this festering trash heap of an organization and their colossal loser of a head coach. Oh, what a loser! The Bucks dropped this one 113 to 110, and that was despite having the 102 101 lead with three and a half minutes to go in the fourth. And at that time in the game, the Grizzlies had scored just seven points in the first eight and a half minutes of that final quarter. What a hell of a coaching job! The loss drops the Bucks now to 35 and 21 for the year, which is now nine games behind Boston for the one seed. Nine times. <laughs> I'm sorry, one seed? They are now four full games behind the Cleveland Cavaliers for the two and have a tenuous grasp at best on even hosting a first round series at all at this point. As both New York and Philadelphia pull within a half of a game of dropping Milwaukee to the five spot in the East. That is ridiculously bad, uh, it, it really is. Um... And hell, they're only four games currently away from dropping all the way to the nine seed. And at the rate they've been on since preeminent playoff pants crapper Doc Rivers took over, that should only take about a week after play resumes following the All-Star break. As the Bucks, who did have the second best record in the NBA when they fired Adrian Griffin, are now just three and seven since Rivers was hired. And this coaching tenure should come to an end as swiftly as it got underway. By now, you all know the story, as Rivers is Milwaukee's third coach in the last 10 months since they fired Mike Budenholzer on May 4th following the shocking playoff collapse in the first round as the number one overall seed in the NBA playoffs. They would hire Adrian Griffin to replace Budenholzer in the summer, only to then fire him seven months later and replace him 10 games ago with the most prolific loser in postseason history. As the list of Doc Rivers playoff accomplishments are long and distinguished. Well, the list is long but distinguished. But not in a good way as he holds a plethora of dubious distinctions in the postseason, including most blown 3-1 leads. It's a complete crap. 
most home game seven losses. It's a complete crap. And most potential series clinching games lost. What a hell of a coaching job. At this point, the Bucks' looming first round flame out seems close to an absolute lock. A second round collapse at best is all but assured. Inevitable. And sure, the Bucks will try their best to get right, to whatever degree that's even possible, over the All-Star break. But this Bucks season has been such a catastrophe, it will be talked about for many years to come and serve as a cautionary tale of the perils that accompany floating a dumpster down the sidelines to coach basketball games. Giannis Antetokounmpo, meanwhile, will be going into his 12th year next season with the Milwaukee Bucks, and just a few months ago in October, signed a three-year contract extension with a player option for the 2027-2028 season. But one could only imagine if he gets anywhere near that year with this franchise. Some significant changes will have to be made, both on the court and most definitely on the sidelines.